Let's continue on looking at blood flow through blood vessels. Let's start up here at the top with Poiseuille's law. This discusses something we looked at in a previous video. Look at what this law tells you. Flow decreases when resistance increases. Makes sense if you think about it. If there's more resistance to the flow, you're going to get less of it. And that's all that it says. And we looked at that resistance equation in a previous video. And remember we said, when you look at what changes the resistance more than anything else, the radius, the size of the blood vessel. They can change their size because of all that smooth muscle found in their wall. Sympathetic nervous system has control over that. And remember, radius is so big when it comes to resistance and flow because any change in radius will be taken to the fourth power. So anytime you take that radius of a blood vessel and decrease it, making the pipe smaller, it gives way more resistance and a lot less flow. Just opposite applies too. You take that radius and make it larger. Now you got a bigger pipe. Now there's less resistance and more flow. So that's what Poiseuille's law is all about. We mentioned viscosity back previously with resistance too. How thick something is makes sense that if for any reason the blood gets thicker, you'd be moving less of it. Raise the viscosity, more resistance, less flow. Just the opposite would apply too. And again, if you want to change how thick your blood is, quickest way to do that right there is to change the water balance. You add more water to your blood, well, that would maybe get thinner. You take water out of the blood, that's going to make it thicker. And again, anything that thickens the blood will decrease the flow. Look at the example here with hematocrit. Remember, hematocrit is the percent that red blood cells make of your total blood volume. So if you're decreasing the hematocrit, that means you've got a lower percent of red blood cells. If you've got fewer cells in the blood, it's going to be thinner. And of course, you're going to see more flow at that time. All this was discussed previously back with the resistance equation. Let's look up here at critical closing pressure. The pressure at which a blood vessel collapses. Now, you're not going to see this with arteries. Arteries have got an enormous amount of pressure in them compared to veins, and they've also got very thick, strong walls. They're not ever going to collapse. It's not going to happen. You'd be dead before that happens there. But it can happen with veins. They have thin walls, so it's not a lot to forcibly hold them open. They got low pressure on the inside. So if that pressure in a vein drops low enough, they will collapse and blood flow will stop. And of course, that can only be a bad thing there. Right after that, we see Laplace's law. This is the force acting on a blood vessel wall. And notice how this is proportional to the diameter of the vessel and also the pressure. So if you look at the little equation here, if you want to know this total force acting on that inner wall of the blood vessel, you have to multiply diameter and pressure. So of course, you'd have to be given diameter and pressure, multiply them, gives you that total force. Now, Laplace's law here also explains where you see most aneurysms. Now, think back. Aneurysms are not a ruptured artery. Common misconception. These are places where you have a weak spot in the wall <clears throat> and it produces a bulge. Well, these bulges are most likely to occur in the arteries with the greatest amount of force inside of them. Well, think about which arteries that would be. The ones with the highest force will be those with the greatest diameter and the greatest pressure. So look at all the arteries of the body. Which one has the greatest diameter? The aorta. And that's that very first artery there at the left ventricle. Very large diameter. Of all the arteries, which one has the greatest pressure? Again, the aorta. It's right there at the left ventricle pump. Pressure's highest there. So since that aorta has the greatest diameter and pressure, there's more force, there's more likely to be aneurysms there than anywhere else. But anywhere close to the heart, you can also see this in other arteries. You often hear about them in the brain. Well, it's full of large arteries, which are relatively close to the heart. That's why you see a lot of them there, too. Let's also look at this vascular compliance. Now, you see that compliance is the tendency for blood vessel volume to increase as blood pressure increases. So to get more pressure to the inside, there'll be more volume. 
You can sort of think of this as how easy that blood vessel wall stretches. You put more pressure to the inside, it's going to stretch. Well, when you compare arteries and veins, veins have far more compliance. So they're going to have a lot more volume in them when the pressure goes up. Now, this can be confusing, right? You think back to arteries, you say, well, wait a minute, they've got a lot of pressure in them, and they've got a lot of elastic tissue in the wall. Well, that's true, but you got to remember that arteries have very thick, strong walls, so they resist that tendency to stretch when the pressure increases. But veins have thin walls, so you increase that pressure in those. With that thinner wall, they stretch a whole lot easier. So that's why veins have much more compliance than arteries. And that explains why there's far more blood in your veins at any one time than what you'll see in your arteries. And look at this right here, what you'd find for the average resting adult. Look at how much more of your blood is in your veins and your arteries. It's not even close. What is that? More than four times right there. Again, because their wall stretches very easily, you increase the pressure in them, they stretch and they hold a lot more blood. And there's what you'd also see with capillaries, lungs, and heart. Let's look at blood viscosity and pressure. Velocity, everybody knows this, how fast something is flowing, right? Very, very rapid in that aorta, it's closest to the pumps, a lot of pressure in it, so it's moving away from that area very quickly. But as you leave the heart through that aorta, and go out through all these other arteries. Remember, arteries start off very large in diameter and they get smaller as you go away. And we said earlier with resistance in another video, anytime you decrease that radius, you get a big increase in resistance, which gives you a lot less flow. So when you look at this velocity, it's very fast in the aorta, slows down as you go all the way towards the capillaries because your radius is getting small. But then as you leave the capillaries and go through the veins, coming back towards the right side of the heart, the veins are getting larger in radius. And an increase in radius gives less resistance and more flow. So you'll see velocity, once you leave the heart, goes down and then comes back up. Pressure, you don't see that. Remember, blood's only going to flow from high to low. So where it starts off highest in that aorta, it continues to drop all the way back to the right side of the heart. And look at this little picture right here that illustrates this. Say the blue line is flow. Again, as you start off in the aorta, you've got a very big radius, but that gets smaller as you go towards the capillaries. So smaller radius, a lot of resistance, less flow. You're dropping the velocity. But again, the veins on the way back, you're increasing the radius. That's less resistance and flow goes up. But look at that compared to the red line that's pressure. There's a steady drop in pressure, but again, velocity goes down and back up. A lot of people would wonder how in the world is the velocity increasing if the pressure's dropping? Well, that goes to show you pressure is not the greatest variable when it comes to blood flow. You got to consider the size of that pipe because, again, even though the pressure's dropping on the way back towards the heart, the veins are getting larger. When that decreases the resistance, you get more flow. And again, for your average adult, you'll see somewhere around 120 over 80. And every time that systolic number goes up 20 and the diastolic up 10, that means a person has a higher stage of hypertension. And they generally go up to about five stages because once you reach that point, that's pretty much all the heart can work against. So again, there's some other pictures showing some major arteries and veins. And again, links to the study guides at the end.